Dermatology has a lot of parts. We have cancer, we have inflammatory diseases, we have kids, we have adults. Really what's exciting is how inflammatory skin diseases are varying from person to person and how that's affected by the bugs and drugs and other things of the environment uh, as well as the person's behavior in terms of who gets better, who doesn't get better, who gets worse you know, naturally or not. We always knew that there were bugs on the skin, and, um, but now we have a much better understanding of how the bacteria and the yeasts and uh, other creatures that we live with, of course there are more of them than us actually from, in terms of cell number, but, uh, but uh, we, we live in a balance with them and they have ways of stimulating our immune system or allowing our immune system to be quiet. Of course, we want our immune system to be quiet to the good ones, so we don't get inflamed just with normal ones. And we want our immune system to be really active if they're bad ones, if they're pathogens like staph or MRSA, you know, kind of staph. So we want a really strong immune response to that. But the good ones that make the antibiotics against the MRSA, we want to have lots of them and we want to be nice and tolerant of them and provide a nice, healthy environment for them so that they keep us healthy. Now we're starting to understand that these, these bugs, for instance, yeasts, can make uh, products that inhibit uh, bacteria growth, and bacteria can make things against other bacteria, so that we have a more quiescent state. And our skin barrier, which can be, normally we want to have a good barrier that lets gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide go back and forth, but keeps the water in and, and keeps stuff out. So when that barrier breaks down, for instance, because of genetics and eczema or atopic dermatitis, the genetics can make there be a little bit more inflammation or make the barrier not glue up as nicely as it should. And that allows inflammation. That inflammation allows a different population of bacteria and yeast to go onto the skin that then can create more inflammation, which makes the barrier even worse. So there's a vicious cycle where now, um, the whole thing, the barrier, the inflammation, the bugs are wrong, everything's out of balance. And so with uh, certain kinds of anti-inflammatory drugs and microbial, uh, antimicrobials and some things like even just a bleach bath that we use, a very, very dilute bleach bath that we um, prescribe, uh, can restore barrier and help uh, calm these things down and give a better barrier. In the meantime, we have new biologic drugs and oral drugs that are coming out that attack very precise parts of the immune system that are starting to emerge in atopic dermatitis and eczema. This is really long overdue, so we're very welcoming of these new advances. They kind of follow on the heels of a similar kind of thing that occurred in psoriasis. So in psoriasis, we have a lot of inflammation of the skin and there has been a series of understandings of the immune system that's been overactive. Now this part of the immune system that's been pinpointed uh, is usually responsible for handling gut bacteria. So we don't understand why it's so active against the skin in terms of creating inflammation, but we do know that these drugs work like gangbusters. And so we can now give injections on a every couple of weeks to every couple of months or every even three to four month basis and have patients, you know, a huge percentage of patients get almost completely clear. So that's remarkable. You have to keep treating. There's no, uh, it's not a cure. You're not fixing the genetics. The person's genetics have, are what they're born with. And then as they have gone through life, they interact with this infection or they've been eating this diet and those things change how the DNA is covered up or uncovered so that different genes can be expressed and cause their psoriasis to be worse or better. So that's hard to change. So the way they are is the way they are. You can treat, it can quiet down for a while, but eventually, you know, the person is who they are and their, their disease will come back. Yes, psoriasis is a, has a genetic component. It is, uh, there are different genes that can be inherited and increase your risk for getting psoriasis. So twins have, a, identical twins, have a, if, uh, if one has the disease, the other twin is very, very likely to have the disease. 
genetics can affect skin diseases in different ways. There's a, we have the opportunity here in the Cleveland area to go to uh, the Twins Day Festival, which is uh, in Twinsburg, Ohio, a few miles south of here. So the Twins Day Festival uh, brings twin pairs from all over the world, really, and thousands come. Uh, and we, uh, we go there with a medical tent and we interview them and examine them and we look for twins that both have psoriasis or both or one does and one doesn't or rosacea we've been focused on the last several years skin aging why does one twin age more than the other skin in terms of their facial characteristics and so we've learned quite a bit from from the twins and we're very grateful to them One of the interesting things that we've done is look at the rosacea, which is a very common disease, especially in, uh, in uh, women in adulthood. And, you know, the redness and pimples that, that come out, you know, well into the, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. And a lot of people struggle with it. So we were looking at what are some of the determinants, how much of it is genetic and how much of it is behavioral. So we were able to kind of sort that out a little bit. We've learned that, the, uh, that a, a lot of it is environmental. There's, there's definitely a genetic component, of course, but, but there's more of an environmental effect than we thought. So sun exposure, smoking, those kinds of things matter. And then we've also looked at the microbes that are, that are there, and we're still analyzing that to see whether there's a different microbial you know, colonization that could have an effect on the outcome.